Welcome to tutorial two, which is on computation as a transformation of representational geometries. Let's talk about two goals of representational comparisons. The first goal is to evaluate alternative model representations with data. So we might have measured the brain of a human or a monkey in response to a number of different stimuli. And so we have a data-based characterization of the representation in the form of a representational dissimilarity matrix. And we might want to compare that to the predicted representational geometries from a number of neural network model representations. So this is a common goal in computational neuroscience. And in this context, there is no need to use a metric. Remember, a metric requires symmetry, non-negativity. It requires that it be zero only if the two vectors or representations ought to be considered identical. And it requires for the triangle inequality to hold. So when we're evaluating alternative models, we may want to use a similarity rather than a dissimilarity. For example, we might want in a bar graph for big bars to correspond to good models. And in fact, there is an inherent asymmetry between the data and the models in that only the data are noisy. Models are often deterministic and have no notion of noise. So the uncertainty comes from the noise in the data. And in this context, the ideal is, from a statistical perspective of comparing the different models, to evaluate the likelihood of each model, which is the probability of the data given the model. So the D here could be a vector that contains all the dissimilarities, so it's the vectorized representational dissimilarity matrix. And the M could be the vector that contains the model predicted dissimilarities. So we'd want to evaluate the, the likelihood of each model, or if the model has parameters, the marginal likelihood or model evidence in order to compare the models. And this entails a fundamentally asymmetric comparison that's not consistent with the use of a metric, which would be symmetric. But then there is another goal, which is to relate many different representations to each other. So for example, in the context of AI, we might have different neural network models, and each of them has many different layers. And we might want to just understand how all of these different representational spaces relate to each other. And in this, context, a symmetric comparison is desirable because each of the models are sort of peers and we want to compare them to each other. And in particular, a metric is desirable, for example, to ensure that theoretical guarantees for classification and clustering hold. And in the context of this tutorial, we're exploring goal two, where we want a symmetric comparison. So let's consider different symmetric RDM comparators, different functions that we can use to compare two RDMs. Each RDM characterizes the representational geometry of one representation. Now we have these two RDMs. We can vectorize them to get vectors D1 and D2. And we want some function C that compares the two. And we require this function to be symmetric here. We can use simple similarity coefficients to compare to RDMs, for example, the cosine similarity, the Pearson correlation coefficient, or the rank correlation coefficient. And these give us different invariances. For example, if all we care about is the ranks of the dissimilarities and we want to consider two representations identical, if the ranks of the dissimilarities within each of these two matrices is identical, then we'd use the rank correlation coefficient, for example, a Spearman rank correlation. That would be a row. Um, or we could use Kandall's rank correlation coefficient, tau. If we wanted the relationship to be linear, we might use the Pearson correlation coefficient. And if we want one of the two to be a scaled version of the other, then we would use the cosine similarity. So if there's only a scaling difference, we'd consider the two identical according to the cosine similarity. We usually don't care about um, scaling, 
So cosine similarity is the strictest we, we usually consider. So these are all similarity coefficients, but what if we wanted dissimilarities? Well, we can convert these similarity coefficients to dissimilarity measures by just taking their complements. So one minus the cosine of the angle between the two vectors, or one minus the Pearson correlation coefficient, or one minus the Spearman rank correlation coefficient, or minus rho. So these correspond one to one. They give the same information, and one is a similarity, the other is a dissimilarity. And it's interesting to note that dissimilarities can be computed as the squared Euclidean distances between the RDMs after normalizing the RDMs appropriately. So for the cosine similarity, we would normalize the length of these vectors, so the norms of these vectors. For the Pearson correlation distance, we'd have to take out the mean of each RDM and then scale the values appropriately. And for the Spearman rank correlation distance, we'd have to replace each dissimilarity by its rank within the, the matrix. If we then take the squared Euclidean distance after appropriate normalization, that's the 1 minus r or 1 minus rho or 1 minus the cosine of the angle between them. However, these are not metrics. For metrics, we have these four particular requirements, so not just symmetry, but also non-negativity. It's supposed to be zero if and only if the two RDMs are to be considered identical and the triangle inequality must hold. So the triangle inequality says that if we go from D1 to D3 via D2, then that cannot be shorter than going directly from D1 to D3. So detours cannot be shortcuts. And what this also implies is that if two things are close to a third thing, then they must also be close to each other. And that's important for theoretical guarantees of some machine learning models. So that's it's a useful property to have. We can turn these dissimilarities at the top there, the normalized RDM squared Euclidean distances, into metrics by just taking the square root. So we have the normalized RDM Euclidean distance, for example. We can also take the shape of the noise in the RDM space into account, so the dependency structure of the dissimilarity estimate, and that would give us the normalized RDM Malanobis distance. And I should say that these normalized RDM Euclidean distances, of course, correspond one to one to these uh, RDM similarity coefficients for appropriate normalizations of the, the RDMs. If we take the dependency structure into account, we have the normalized RDM Malanobis distance. The different options for normalization there correspond to whitened RDM error measure, measures, which we have for biased RDM estimators and for unbiased RDM estimators. And in each of these cases, they can be based on the cosine similarity or the Pearson correlation. And if we take the one for biased RDM estimators and using the cosine similarity, that's equivalent to the linear CKA. So that's an interesting perspective on the linear CKA, which is the linear centered kernel alignment. That's a popular measure in machine learning. And we can understand that as a measure that uses the cosine similarity for biased RDMs and takes the dependency structure into account. There's also a couple of other options. For example, instead of the cosine similarity, which is the cosine of the angle between the two RDMs, we can just take the angle, and that's also an RDM metric. Or we can take the Kendall tau A rank correlation distance, and that's also a metric. Or we can take what's known as the angular CKA, a particular metric that's introduced by Alex Williams in a, in a paper that I'm going to highlight in the next slide. So this is just like a little roadmap to give you a sense of the relationships between some 
important and frequently used similarities and dissimilarities. And to give you a sense that most of these have metric variants. So if a metric is desirable, you can measure that you like perhaps for its invariances into, into a metric in this way. So in this tutorial, one key idea is the idea of neural networks as paths through the space of representations. And this is the title of a very interesting paper by Richard Lang. And I'm going to show you the example of the analysis in this paper to motivate a little bit what you'll be doing in this tutorial in a simpler way. So Richard Lang looked at ResNet 14 model trained on CIFAR 10, and here's the model. So it has all of these layers and different kinds of operations, convolution, batch norm, ReLU, skip connections, and so on, softmax, going from the images to the targets. And he was interested in understanding how these operations transform the representation from the image space to the labels. So I had these response matrices to a number of different input images in each of these representations and computed gram matrices. So these are similarity matrices from them. And then he used the angular CKA measure, which we can think of as the angle between two vectors. So the representations lie on a hypersphere, and we measure the distance between them as the angle between them. And this is a measure that was introduced by Alex Williams in a 2021 paper. So here are the citations to these two papers, which will be interesting, deeper reading if you wanted to take the next step with the topics of this tutorial. So on this basis, Richard computed a square matrix that measures the distance of each representation to each other representation. And he then embedded the representations in 2D so that we can visualize the path through the space of representations. So two important reference points are the inputs. So that's the, the input images and the labels that the network maps to. We can see for each little step here, for example, the convolutional operation, the batch norm, and the ReLU in light blue, darker blue, and purple, exactly how they move the representation through the space. And this way, we can go through the blocks and see this path here that leads from the inputs to the labels. So have fun with the tutorial. And if you want to go a little deeper, have a look at these two great papers by Alex Williams and Richard Lang.